Hi there, Psycho Enthusiasts, and welcome to the first episode of 2017 of Friday Psycho Best Practices. Wow, I, I can't believe it's been a year, and it, it just flew by, but we're not about to slow down. It's just going to get better, so stick around, subscribe to the YouTube channel um, if you haven't yet. Check out cmsbestpractices.com. In fact, click on the follow link and put in your email so you don't miss um, an episode. Every time there is a blog post or an episode posted on my website, you will get a notification so you'll always be up to date. So let's get right back to business. Now, in this episode, I'd like to talk to you about security. More specifically, about Mongo security. You may already know where I'm going with this. You're looking at the article about 28 thousand Mongo instances hacked roughly uh, recently uh, about December 27th a hacker logged in to uh, databases uh, probably obviously a script deleted all the data and left a record asking for ransom in exchange for the data back so how did so many databases get hacked so quickly in a single day I'm sure actually the number by now is much higher well what happened is all those databases that got exposed to the hack were publicly open, uh, publicly exposed databases with no authentication enabled on them. So they were absolutely open to the public, ready for a uh, anyone's connection to be accepted. So it was just a matter of sniffing the default ports. I wonder if they were also on the default port 27017. Uh, and simply connecting to the databases and doing whatever you want. I mean, in my book, they were asking to be hacked. Who in the right mind exposes a public database without authentication? I mean, even if you don't care about the data, you could be subjected to uh, being involved in a hack, like your da uh, database could be used for malicious purposes, um, and that will in turn get you involved in some legal cases or whatnot. I mean, it's just, all around is just bad karma to do. Just, just never do that. Um, I can't believe so many people did that, but the main question is how did so many people end up without the password on their Mongo instances? You don't hear about cases like that on SQL servers, do you? Well, that's because the Mongo installer does not require you set the password when you install Mongo. Uh, uh, while the SQL installer, of course, does. We're all familiar, if you've ever installed SQL, you have to give the SA user password, even add some users during the install. Mongo doesn't do that. It doesn't even ask you if you'd like to do that. Now, what happens is when you install Mongo, Mongo being a new technology, not many people are very, very familiar with it. So they simply get ignorant to the fact that they um, need to install the user um, I guess you just have to um, sometimes hold users by the hand and uh, l let them know at least that that option is available or the consequences of the option. I mean, we're all humans. It's easy to miss um, a step when you're setting up a, an environment, especially if you're in a crunch. Now, long story short, 28,000 got hacked uh, because there was no authentication. So let's say you're have a uh, you have a Mongo instance uh, that's sitting out there publicly exposed with no authentication that you just realized you have. By now it's probably hacked, but let's say it's still in good shape, and you'd like to add authentication to it. So, how do we go about it? Very very simple. So, let me pull up a command prompt here. Let me start a um, a new Mongo instance just using the default command. There you go. Now let me go ahead and connect to it, Mongo. If you don't specify the port or the IP connects to the local port to the default 27017 IP address. So let's see if we get all databases and we do, we have admin access now because we don't have any users set up, we don't have any authentication set up. Anyone who connects to the database can do whatever they want with it, which is not a good idea. So let's go ahead and see how to start Mongo with authentication or authorization. I'm not actually sure what that parameter stands for, but look at that, dash dash auth. That is all that's required uh, to start Mongo with security enabled. Boom. Okay. Now let's go ahead and try to connect and let's Try to run the same command. Show data, show to bees. 
show to these. Boom. Air. Let's uh, use admin. Show collections. Error. So as you can see, we're now getting authorization error. It's not authorized on admin to execute command and so forth. So this is how easy it is to start Mongo in uh, secured mode. Now, if you'd like to find out more about Mongo security, authentication setup, types of security, and types of authentication that exist in Mongo, check out the Mongo documentation. They've done a pretty good job recording it on their website. The only thing I wish they would have included that option in their installer um, to, to uh, uh, set up a password. And this is why it's very important um, for us as developers, and we can actually all take a, a lesson from this, uh, is to set the right defaults. Set the right defaults in Sitecore standard values, uh, set the right defaults in settings, configuration settings, and code, and so forth. This is why it's important because not everyone, <laughs> not everyone likes to read the documentation. So here you go. This is a page that talks about how to enable simple authentication, how to add users and get authorized with users. Uh, user account, connection strings. Uh, once you actually enable authentication on your Mongo instance, you would need to edit the Mongo connection string in your connection strings config file to add the authentication. You can also look up the syntax here on the Mongo website. It's pretty simple. Um, so there you go. Uh, make sure, please make sure to secure Mongo and really any other databases or applications, anything you're running. Uh, whether it's publicly exposed or it's only an internal application. Remember, most hacks uh, statistically happen from the inside of the network, so keep that in mind as well. All right, so hopefully you liked this episode, and we're off to 2017. Like I said, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up. That keeps me going. Uh, check out cmsbestpractices.com. And in the meantime, I'll see you next Friday. Over and out.